Wow, hey, it's Kerry Brown. I'm here with Matt Penfield. Yeah. I've been kind of behind the scenes for, for a minute, a couple of weeks on putting this thing together. You've been working your ass off. I think we've all been going pretty much <laughs> nonstop every the, hour, right? <laughs> nonstop every hour, 24-7 for the last month to make yeah. this happen. And uh, thank you, Matt. Yeah, it's been great. I love doing it. It's, it's, it's so near and dear to my heart. And, right. you know, I love working with you anyway. Carrie, we do a lot of great stuff together. So this... This is so important. So and 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 so is Jerry Bryant. I mean, this guy with Joe Shanahan at the Metro, and we just shot uh, Local H at the Metro, and that was a great performance. It was so cool. And Joe, Joe and Jerry are kind of the guys that 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 are the fabric of who I am. You know, Chicago. I moved there in '85. I met Joe Shanahan in 1986. It was Cabaret Metro back then, and Jerry Bryant was always JB TV was always there, always there. Um, yeah, you know Jerry. Over yeah, the years too. I know. You know, I love Jerry, and you know, I was telling Jerry that I watched him on W O R in New York because the show was syndicated, and I was so hungry for great music on television back then. I was like, "Wow, this guy's cool, and he's playing all these new bands that I that I love." And then I'm finding out it was it's such a great opportunity to be here to talk to you, Jerry. So well, it's an uh, honor for you me because you're one of my heroes in the broadcast business. You've always been there with good music, just like I think we've been, but you're like an encyclopedia of music. You know absolutely everything. You know, like I could, I, I, anybody could ask you a question about any band and you'd like know the background, everything. I, on the other hand, am just a music fan and, and can't remember most everything, but I love all the different music, you know. And back in the day when I had my TV show, we would get all, I would do commercials and stuff for all the different radio uh, stations, TV commercials, you know, where they'd want the Madonna cut, you know, Hello, Vogue, but on there would be all these other different artists, and that's how JBTV was sprung. It was my hobby, and it's always been a love of music. So, yeah, it's I mean, such an important show, isn't uh, it? So Gary? important, and and and, and all we like a it. big part of the the Chicago music scene. I mean, Jerry was always there. I, I remember pumpkin shows, early pumpkin shows at the Metro. Jerry and I got the chance to work together on on the Smashing Pumpkins reissues. Yeah. And, you just talk a little bit just just name a few of the major artists when the first time they came through chicago or early on in their career that oh, you were thanks. documenting over your show i mean radio had uh smashing pumpkin siamese dream you know that that weekend where they did three shows and we recorded the show right in the middle because they had the industry night the first one but you know the industry people are a little uptight you know but the real fans were on the other shows and that's the ones we taped and uh, those are so magical. Jeff Buckley, the late, great Jeff Buckley, was another great artist that uh, was truly inspiring. In fact, I put a little piece together for you guys. Right now, I'd like to uh, introduce to you the guy you watch on JBTV every week, the man with the camera, Jerry Bryant. He is such a star. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant. Now, you probably don't know who I am. I've been producing and hosting and actually founded a television show back in 1984, right here in the great city, the epicenter of rock and roll, Chicago. Jerry's had the creme de la creme of the rock and roll world through these doors. One of the cornerstones of Chicago music. I'm glad you're real. No, it's all a big ruse. Like learning how to set a VCR so I could take this show. This is freeform TV. Since I was a kid. La, la, la. We play the music that other TV stations don't play. It's all about the love of music. Oh, I see. So I'm now just a walking ad for you. It was absolutely an oasis. I remember going to shows, and there's the guy I see on TV with the camera filming everything. I've worked other places before, and it's nothing like this. <laughs> We're like a classic club, only we're a classic TV show with that kind of uh, classic feel. I'd like to see TV change for the better. Bands love coming here. Rock and roll! Smashing Pumpkins. Disturbed. New Found Glory. Garbage. This is a piece of rock and roll history. Touched the lives of millions of people, but he's also launched bands. Where they might be giants on JBTV. I'm helping artists 
That's what I'm here for. And it's all about great music. That's inspiring to me. I want to be more excited about life the more I live it. And Jerry's a good role model for that. Let's bring out the legend, Gary Newman. We all pray. And I've had the privilege of being on stage and filming some of the greatest acts all around the world. And they all come through Chicago, like Radiohead. Could I have a dream? I'm a winner. Seeing Radiohead for the first time, Tom York, no question about it, was a little different than most of the people that had been in Metro. He had a certain it's sort of like mad scientist sort of feel or something. He just very committed, very emotional on stage. Mission statement of Metro, um, in my mind was to be involved with new emerging artists nationally, regionally, and locally. So the, the idea of us doing local music uh, was a big part of what our calendar always was, and still is to this day. So whether it was you know Naked Ray Gun and Big Black and um, Liz Fair or Material Issue or Smashing Pumpkins, Local Age, Disturbed, Point on Pondering, Several of these really, you know, tremendous bands that have come out of, of, of Chicago. You know, our CD release was at the Metro. And I think that, interestingly enough, we're probably the only band, I would think, in the history of Chicago that got signed having only played the Metro twice. And of course, the Smashing Pumpkins, well, they actually are a Chicago band. Quiet! I'm here right now in my home TV studio because of the COVID-19 crisis. And because of this crisis, it has put a lot of venues throughout the world, and especially here in Chicago and in America, out of business virtually. It's funny, Metro, you know, it's, it's sort of like the Fillmore Midwest. Uh, Jeff Buckley, the, I believe, had me and about 1,100 people spellbound, maybe the only time I've ever been in my club where when he brought it way down to a whisper and it was so quiet that you could hear him breathing on stage. And when I say you could hear a pin drop, it's true. And that's, there's, it's never been repeated. The couple times come close, but never been repeated on that legendary show that he played at Metro. That was uh, remarkable. We were in the the, the same space of true, true greatness. This is our last goodbye. I hate to feel the love The venues that are the lifeblood of this city and the lifeblood of music throughout the entire world. The place where people get the spiritual energy to experience music the way it's supposed to be experienced in a great atmosphere at a great club. And Chicago has got some of the finest clubs anywhere in the world, like Chicago's Metro. Did you know that it used to be called the Cabaret Metro back in the early days? The building on North Clark Street, uh, the history is, is actually very interesting. I believe the what I understand from the city uh, is that it was used as a, a community center for the developing uh, Swedish German and Polish community that was in and around Ridley Field. Uh, with 1927 was when the building was, was built. People, well, people didn't design those places for like screaming, like, yeah! They were, they were designed for like clog dancing and, you know, I'd like to accept the Friar Award. It was used as a, a building for people to get information about living in America and living in, in, in Chicago. I also know it was a uh, very notorious uh, gay bar called Center Stage where I saw Grace Jones, and then after that, a place called Stages Music Hall, which I had seen several shows. I also believe it was also called 
the Northside Auditorium building where they did folk music for many years. The charm of the room is 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 that the room is not a long throw. It's a, it's a it's a short squat room. There's not a place you really can't see the stage from. So as the artists see the audience, the audience is seeing the artist. So it's a very kind of nice um, feeling between the, 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 the two uh, entities coming together. The idea that um, the Metro is kind of like this little beacon in the middle of the Midwest, and there were three or four clubs in the Midwest that kind of played the same artist. And it was St. Andrews in Detroit, First Avenue in Minneapolis, Metro Chicago and probably Mississippi Nights in St. Louis and and we all did the same touring acts. It was kind of a circuit. It branched to New York, it branched to LA of course, but the Midwest, those were the venues you played. And we began to kind of, the, the owners of those clubs and the talent brokers of those clubs began to talk to each other and realize what was going on in each other's town. So we were able to say, hey, you know, I would call Vince Bannon and, and Emir uh, Daza in Detroit and say, hey, you should do the Pumpkins. Pumpkins are doing great for me. You should, you should, you should definitely book Smashing Pumpkins. Good things will happen from it. Trust us, you know. And then they would send us something like, oh, I don't know. Um, the Bodines came from Milwaukee. Certainly, the Minneapolis side of things really comes into play here because when the club was first starting out, the fact that the replacements, Husker Du, Soul Asylum, for me that was a really important beginning of like kind of a transference of like bands from city to city. We're here in the Rave record store, uh, right next door to the Cabaret Metro. And we plan to have many in stores, hopefully, with uh, bands that come through uh, the club and uh, you guys had a line all the way around the corner up the side here and everything our neighbors are used to that when those bands hit the door when those bands pull up their station wagons their vans their tour buses or other lear jets it's still they're treated the same way they come into the, they come into the venue and people are excited to see them uh, and that's what takes, I think, and what makes a club more than just an idea. It becomes kind of a, becomes a legend or becomes something of heritage is that people begin to take it very seriously. I know all I can do is just blow some teeth or two and maybe even speak my point of view, but it's not safe. room itself speaks volumes for the ones that have come down those halls and the ones that have graced those boards on stages. Um, more about the history and the heritage of it. Um, I think that young bands today, they want to play the place that REM played at. I'm Jerry Bryan. Thanks for watching a little bit of Chicago history from the Windy City, downtown Chicago. And uh, donate now because these venues need your help. Thank you, Jerry. Great seeing Thank you, Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And uh, uh, keep on donating. Send money. Support the cause. That's you right. got it. Thanks, right, Jerry. Man. Good Thank to see you. Thank you.